Hi, I'm Shami Anderson, Senior Representative with Defenders of Wildlife. Today I'm going to talk to you about prairie dogs, which are a keystone species on our native grasslands. We've lost about 95% of our historic prairie dog habitat. And why they're so crucial is uh, for the recovery of the highly endangered and once to believe extinct black-footed ferret. Through eradication programs, lethal control, slobatic plague, and also the conversion of grasslands to croplands and rangelands, uh, we've lost about 95% of our prairie dog resource. So conserving prairie dogs for ferret recovery is really key for our work. This is a map uh, showing the different prairie dog species that we work with, and you can see the black-tailed prairie dog is right you know, all the way down that, that Great Plains central area. And um, black tails tend to be sort of in dense colonies, so really great for ferrets, but white tail are also uh, really important for ferret recovery. As I mentioned, the Shirley Basin is one site where white tail prairie dogs occur. So with prairie dogs, they're not only important for ferret recovery, this is a keystone species that provides for upwards of 100 different plains wildlife rely on the prairie dog to make a living. Either they, they prey on prairie dogs or they utilize the burrow system, um, including birds such as mountain plover, burrowing owl, uh, swift fox utilize their burrows. Uh, bison prefer to graze uh, in prairie dog colonies. Prairie dogs clip the grass and forbs down to a certain level where they're really succulent and nutritious. And so there's this amazing symbiotic relationship out there in the prairie with prairie dogs and a host of other species. But of course, it's not just about wildlife out there. We have other uses of the land, including agricultural production, livestock. Um, so we really work with ranchers to see where we can um, address conflicts and where we can coexist with ranching operations and prairie dog habitat co um, conservation for ferret recovery. Beginning in the 1800s, there was these mass uh, poisoning eradication programs of prairie dogs uh, to open the way of, for agricultural production and croplands. And that still continues, uh, but it's something that we're working really hard to, um, to minimize because there's other tools to save prairie dogs and to address conflicts. And I'll get into those here in a moment. So in addition to conversion of native grasslands to croplands and the poisoning, we've also had sylvatic plague in, uh, since the 1940s that came plague came over on Asian ships and rodents, and now it's on our grasslands, and you never know when it's going to erupt. Um, but we have tools to keep it at bay. Uh, insecticides, it requires us every year to apply those in the, to the prairie dog burrows to vaccinate prairie dogs and ferrets against plague. And again, all in the name of conservation. Translocation is really important. So because we've lost 95% of our prairie dog habitat, we have to um, trap prairie dogs where they're in conflict areas on adjacent ranch lands where they're going to be poisoned, and we move them to core areas to build up the habitat for ferrets to then be released. When we move prairie dogs, we have to give them starter homes, and so we create these nest boxes um, out of plywood and, and big rubber tubes, and we dig a hole and we put the boxes in the hole, and then we cover them up with dirt, and usually these are really long days, lots of hard work. Once we get the prairie dogs trapped, we bring them to their new home and release them and then they have a place to start their, you know, start their home in, in a protective box, if you will, underground. This totally takes team effort with the partners on the ground, as well as the various agency workers and other NGOs like the Humane Society of the United States and Prairie Wildlife Research. Often we'll put out like 400 traps in one, one hit, and then we'll bait those traps. And we like to trap the whole coterie, the whole family, and then we'll bring those animals and we'll mimic that footprint on the recovery ferret recovery site. So they will, the prairie dogs will have the same neighbors. So it's really important, the prairie dog dynamics and to the health of the, of the system to have it be really a methodical operation with their translocation efforts. So here's me releasing a prairie dog into an acclimation cage. We give them lettuce and carrots and let them acclimate there for a few days and then we'll remove that, that cage and then they can cruise around and start, start building new homes and enhancing and expanding their habitat. And as I mentioned, plague mitigation is something we do every summer. So we'll spray Delta dust, it's this insecticide, in every prairie dog burrow. We work with the team and we'll take a section of prairie and we'll just walk in a line for miles and miles and spray every prairie dog burrow. And the insecticide doesn't hurt the prairie dog or the ferret. 
It just uh, kills the fleas that spread plague. And this has been really successful at places like Kanata Basin, Buffalo Gap National Grasslands, and Badlands National Park. We've got 140 ferrets on 10,000 acres of prairie dog habitat. Thunder Basin National Grassland in Wyoming, this is a place we're working with ranchers to hopefully go from lethal control poisoning to uh, eventually um, accepting and wanting ferrets to be part of the ecosystem there. And so we can actually release them there. That's our hope, but it's been it's been a challenge. It was it's required a lot of in-person meetings, collaborating with ranchers on habitat restoration, you know, really showing that we can work together on on their on their concerns and solutions. Um, something we do at Defenders of Wildlife is we advocate non-lethal tools like vegetation barriers. So we'll plant grass, certain seed mixture. We'll grow the grass really tall, so the prairie dogs have a natural aversion to tall grass. They don't want to go through it. So cattle ranching can occur on these private lands, and then we can recover ferrets on the other side of the grass. And uh, it's worked really well, and we're trying it out on Thunder Basin. And this is all to recover our endangered black-footed ferrets. It takes a lot of work, but a lot of the work involves prairie dogs. <laughs> and we couldn't do it without Defenders of Wildlife and without you, our members, contributing to the cause and supporting the Endangered Species Act. That's a big part of our work and getting engaged in prairie dog conservation programs in your, your neck of the woods, staying informed on your state wildlife agency non-game plans, and just everything you do contributes to what we do in the field on the ground. So thank you very much.